Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I've started doing the rocks rewrite version three, as you can tell in the file names. I'm, I'm trying to, if I run into a file name that I'm gonna wanna reuse again, I put a V3 after it, but I'll explain more as I get into this stuff. I am gonna do coding while I record. That's kind of the whole point of why I do this channel. But as I've mentioned before too, sometimes it can be a little frustrating to try to get stuff done while I'm recording, but that's why I'm doing this. So I wanted to at least get a jump on this to some degree and get the ball ro rolling before I started to actually do the coding while I'm recording. So I started to do some of it and you know, a little bit of bumps and, and edges along the way, but definitely I think I've made progress and want to talk a little bit about where I'm at right now. It's actually, I hate to say this because I know as soon as I say this, I'm going to curse myself, but I feel like I'm a bit in a better space than I thought I was going to be because I realized, well, I've actually done a fair amount of the work in a way. There's no reason to redo that. And what do I mean by that? Well, to find the syntax that I'm looking for, that doesn't change. To transform the target doesn't change all that much. The one thing that changes is where the changes start to happen is here, because now I'm returning this mock model that contains a couple of things and we'll get into that in a moment. I've also taken off the ability to try to find out, well, are you using tabs or spaces and all that stuff? I said, screw it. It's just, it's not worth it. It's really not worth writing code that totally matches your coding style. It's generated code. And I'm kind of like, there's no point in doing that. So I took that off for simplicity's sake. And I just simply now go into register source output. Since I'm assuming that all of this is done for caching purposes to get this model, which is a record, that I should only be getting one and only one, assuming it's not null. And so there's no longer a check in here with making the output to keep a list of, or a hash table, I'm sorry, hash, excuse me, hash set of potential targets. I'm assuming if you come into here and I was able to actually say, yes, there is a type you can mock, that means there are no error diagnostics. So I report all of them up here, but I'm assuming that there are no diagnostics. I'm sorry, are no error diagnostics if type is not is not null. And then I can go off and start to actually build the code. So this is a little bit smaller than what I had before. It actually feels a little bit more compact and succinct and, and I kind of like at least where it's been going so far. If you go into this new method here, or new type method, whatever you want to call it, this mock model, we do some create, and yes, we still have to start with a type symbol and a model and all that stuff. And I'm still doing all the checks that I did before, getting all the shims and all the methods, properties and events. It all, well, works <laughs> as, as best as it can, if, you know, as long as there's not any bugs in it, but all that work is there. There's no point in, in this mockable constructors and methods to change any of that. I only, when I get down to here, is where I discover, well, can I actually mock this? And arguably, if this is, in fact, I'm gonna put a to-do here, uh, to-do, if the type itself has diagnostics, arguably there's, there's no point in doing any work. And I might actually in this episode shift that up and just say, hey, if you get to this point, return that it's null and get the fully qualified name, pass in any diagnostics that are currently there and move on. Though, to be fair, in that case, we would say, well, get all the diagnostics from type to mod. Well, no, we wouldn't do any because we haven't even done any of our analysis up here. There'd be a point where we would say, hey, look, if the type itself has diagnostics, I have no idea whether I can actually mock you or not. I, I don't want to make that assumption. So 
let's wait until you give us a type that actually is good and then we can move on from there. So yeah, I'm gonna do that in a moment. But if we ran through all this stuff and we found diagnostics, then we're gonna say, well, if you're not mockable, return null here, otherwise create a new, and this is a type model, which we'll get to in a moment. You're seeing a pattern emerging hopefully here. And then I just transform all the things here, the constructors, methods, properties, and events into models and grab what I need, at least what I think I need so far. And if I need more things, so be it. That will actually be done in the models themselves. So like if I go into method model, you'll see that I'm passing in a method symbol, but I don't capture it. It's only there for the constructor. And so at some point I'm, I'm guessing I will need to start grabbing like all of the parameters, both the regular parameters and the generic parameters and the return type and their attributes on it and on and on and on. But they'll all be done in the constructor and they'll all be captured like in a equatable array of parameters and, and so on. And I'll just keep what I need. And so that will trickle all the way through here and return that. I'm So a couple of other things here too. You can see that I well at some point, I need to put a to do here as well, is to remember to sort all these because they need to be equatable. If you look at the equatable array implementation, it's assuming that's equatable if there's the same amount of members, which makes sense. If you have five and four, they're not equatable. But if you have five and five, it looks at the positional placement of the elements within the array and says, if in the zero index, if those two are equal, then you're equal, move on. And then as soon as you find one that's false, you can stop. For things like the methods and, and properties, I want them to be sorted because I, it doesn't matter where they are in the in the type definition itself. What does matter is that they are in some sort of sortable order and that we're determining which one is matching with which one. But we can't do that with parameters because that actually affects the signature of a method. So we cannot change the order. We're gonna just have to take either what Rosalind gives us, or if we can figure out a way to ensure that this is like the first parameter and the second parameter and the third parameter and so on, that we always preserve that order and that we don't change that. So that's what I am doing here. I'm also grabbing the fully qualified name because when we get back to the generator, again, we're returning a mock model that can just be fully null. And, in, and we're doing that only in the case if what we found wasn't the right invocation symbol being rock create and a parameter, a generic parameter and so on. So we're gonna filter those out, but that still means that we can get down here and that we may not have a type because we've determined that there's problems. However, we still need to have for caching purposes and being able to have something that's equatable Maybe you're trying to mock a type that you're having errors with. So we will capture those in our diagnostics, but we still need to have then a, another property to specify, well, which mock type would this be? Or more, more correctly, what is the, the type of the, of the mock? And we're gonna get the fully qualified name to do that. So that's why I'm capturing that as well, because I need to have that, that one record type have something in there that will still give an equatable if you are trying to use a type and it has issues, because we're gonna have the actual type model be null in that case. So at least that's my reasoning right now. But again, all of this is moving towards not returning anything that's Rosalind based here. All of what's being returned here in this mock model all the way down should have nothing to do with Rosalind. It should all be immutable, nothing should be changed. And it's basically stuff that I can read from such that when I get to the point down here, I will actually be building and just reading from these properties. And then I can actually get this incremental compilation approach more importantly with caching so that if this keeps running through here, 
it won't keep trying to generate because if the symbol types are actually not equatable anymore and they're different, then we don't run through everything and regenerate. And that's actually what would happen right now. I, I believe if you would create an interface or let's just say an abstract class and you did it the first time, we generate. And then the second time you come through and let's say you've added a method that's non-virtual, we would still generate because we don't rec even if, yeah, because they're not the same types in, in terms of their definitions and their quality, I would imagine that they would be considered not the same. And so we generate even though we wouldn't care about that new non-virtual method. And so with this approach, we're only picking what we need and using that to be based on equality. And so hopefully like in cases like that as well, we would, we'd still need to do this. We still need to generate this and return it, but the incremental compilation stuff internally will hopefully pick up and cache that and go, ha, it's the same exact thing of what I saw before. Doesn't matter that that's changed. You're saying what you need didn't change and we don't need to go through and generate all the code. So it'll definitely be a step, a, a time saver from that perspective. I wish there was a better way to do this because I'm, I'm always fearing, man, we're gonna have to do a lot of work. But the, you know, I always have to keep in mind myself that this library is targeting types that hopefully, this isn't always a truism, but hopefully there's a long tail. You're targeting a type that's an interface that only has a handful of members on it and there really won't be that much work to do to generate the data model for that particular type. Of course, there are cases where there's an extensive type hierarchy that I have to traverse to figure out what it is that you're looking for. Though arguably, that's what's being done up here when we get all the get mockable stuff. And that's where we're doing all the work to find it. That doesn't change. We're still gonna have to do that. And now we're just picking what we need. So progress has been made. I wanna start doing now some work while I'm recording so that we can continue on and see, oh, what am I gonna run into and, and shake my head on and, and start crying about? I think, where did we get Rock Create Builder? Yeah, so now we're getting into the actual mock builder where we start actually going through all the things and trying to actually create the code. So if we go into the builders and there's gonna be a lot of V3s in here, but that's, that's okay. Mock Builder, let's turn that into a Mock Builder V3, okay? So I can change that to that. We need the indent to text writer. We need a type model. Yep, we're gonna call that type. I'm hoping that I don't need the compilation. I, I really, Hope I don't, and I'm gonna now put another to-do. Oh, I'm gonna come back to the to-do I said I was gonna to-do to ton. To do on comment as more progress is made. So right now I don't care about special types that need to be projected. We can grab from our type. I think, yeah, we capture the flatten name there and we're gonna need, we're gonna care about that. We're gonna say writer and type, and we indent we write line. This is the actual mock type builder, which should again be type, and then we're gonna do properties and events later, and return were types projected. Ah, and we're gonna just say return false right now because we are not, but we will come back to that later. Speaking of coming back to stuff later, I think that was up in the mock model create. Okay, so let's say if the type contains any diagonal. Whoa, that's <laughs> not the keystroke I meant. So if we do this and we just say up here, before we do anything, Let's say if type to mock contains diagnostics, what we're gonna do is 
return. No, we can't. We can't return a null here. Well, we could. <laughs> we, we could return a null because we can actually return a null from here. So I guess we could say returning null is fine. Return null. And we're done. Well, with that step. And then we don't even have to do any of this. So now we can say that. And then get rid of that. And now we see, yeah, we return a new. If it's not mockable, this null is for the type model. But we still want to return what diagnostics we found. These are our specific diagnostics that ROX generates. Not anything that was there to start with. So, okay, we've solved that problem, I believe. Moving on. Let's go back to Rock Create Builder. And now we want to say V3 here. And Builder V3. Let's go into Mock Method Extensions Builder. Copy and paste. At some point, all of the ones that are not V3 will be deleted and then I will take I will take off all of the v3s so they'll basically just copy and replace but I don't want to remove anything just yet or try to overwrite them because that would be I think a, a recipe for disaster you know all hail the git <laughs> with with the ability just to throw everything in a branch and you don't have to worry about it so we say type model here and now we say type and what we want to look at is the type methods length because that's what we really care about. If there's type to mock name, referenceable name is, we're just saying fully qualified name because that's better. Now I think this is where we're gonna to start to move into type results any. And we don't have results, we just have methods, but Yes, we do capture that, that's good. So we've got that, we say, I love, I love IntelliCode in Visual Studio and that's getting better and better and making things just less and less paper cuts, making it easier and easier to get things changed. The, the whole explosion with AI and chat, GPT and all that other stuff. I, I think there's going to be the hype cycle and we'll eventually figure out how it's used. And I don't mean to dismiss it. Very powerful stuff there. You know, I, I actually think there is, unlike other things that have been hyped in recent history, I think this is actually something that there's a lot of viability here and there's a lot of cool stuff going in there. That being said, I would never just trust anybody, a a large language model or a human just to say, give me this and expect to just take it at face value and not verify it. You know, that, that can also make the step of doing that much simpler, much faster, much easier. But there better actually be humans all along the process verifying things that they are they are what you want it to be. Okay. That being said, I'm, I'm, IntelliCode is getting be better all the time in Visual Studio. They also did the color matching on the braces. That's an option where you can go in your text editor and turn that on. VS Code's had that for a while. I, I'm still a little bit on the fence with it. It actually feels a little distracting at times. And these always have helped with the matching of stuff. Though with the, the parentheses, it's always highlighted as well what the braces are and what they match. But I'm, I'm experimenting with it. I'm giving it a whirl. Okay, so we come down here and we're going to say type methods. Now there are no results, so we're going to just do that and we're that. And now we say, oh, for each of our type group, group by, well, <laughs> okay. I, I kind of know what's going here because these are explicit things and explicit things have to be grouped together. So what we want to do is group them together by their containing type, the type of the method. And really what we need from that, if you look at the type group, is 
the fully qualified name and the key and the name. This is again, I'm going to be doing a lot of this is jumping back and forth between what should I have captured and what do I need to capture now? What I need to capture here is if for a method, if we want to do what, where is the containing type name come into play here? Yes. When we generate this code, we need to know what type this explicit interface implementation is coming from. And then we need to also have a flattened name for it. So arguably what we could say is if we go to our method model, what we want to do, and this is a this is one of those cases. So it's just a matter of, I know what I need to do. I just need to think of what kind of name do I want to have here? So I'm going to break this out so we actually have a block body. Okay, and we're gonna just do that there. And then we're gonna say, if requires explicit implementation equals yes. Then what we wanna do is set these two names. Containing type, fully qualified name, let's do that. Internal string containing type, fully qualified name. And that would be a get, but not a set. And then we want containing type, flatten name. And maybe at some point I find it a, a, a good way to have like a struct that pulled, I might have done that already, I'm not sure, flattened name. And these can actually be null because they don't always have to be set. If you're not doing explicit in interface implementation, they don't need to be there. So this uh, containing type fully qualified name is gonna be equal to the method containing type get fully qualified name. And then the containing type containing type flatten name is going to be this. We're going to say get name where the type name options is flatten. And I might, once I get through all this, change that so that we actually have a get flatten name. Get, you know, get included, get name with included generics, you know, something that just doesn't just have get name. All right, so now we've got this. So now we can hop back over here and say group by containing type fully qualified name. So we're gonna do it on a string, not on that. And now here, ah, so, nope, that didn't happen the way I wanted it to. What is the key here? Oh, the key is a string, that's right, it, it is that. So now if I say value, no, these are the groups for each type group. Oh, yeah, I group by, I want just a part of that. And I was able to do this before because I could, so what we could just say here is flatten name. There, so now we say, yeah, because this is now just a tuple. So we say, except we, we want the fully qualified name and we want the flattened name and this would be key flattened name and Bob's your uncle. There we go, we, we've already, we had this done, we're all good. <laughs> so yeah, this just generates the extensions. If we come back here to the mock builder we just did the extensions builder. The next one that's gonna be more, so, oh yeah, we wanna change this now to a v, V3. So we got that done. And now we can move the type builder and then the extensions builder for the methods. And actually, I wanna get just that far with just methods, methods with no default, well, maybe default values, but nothing special, nothing that requires esoteric type of work. I just wanna to get to the point where I can say, if I have a method or if I have an interface with a method that maybe has one parameter or even none, what does this do? Because once I get that in place, you know, then we can keep moving on. So I think I'm gonna stop with this 
episode for right now. I'm actually recording these over Memorial Day weekend. I have a four-day weekend because I took off an extra day. So I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of work over Memorial Day weekend. Not work, fun work, my own personal work, and and see how far I can get during this break to see how much I can break rocks apart and put it all together again. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.